Hello, everyone, and welcome back. In the past few lectures, we've been introducing what are known as parametric curves in the plane. And the way that you should really think about these are they are just general or more abstract ways of describing more complicated curves in the plane that we could describe just using regular old functions like y is equal to f of x. And you know, a particular example of this is something like the circle where we saw x is equal to cos of t and y is equal to sine of t defines a nice circle of radius one. Whereas that circle can't be described just using a regular function, you know, y is equal to f of x. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to introduce what are known as polar coordinates. And it's going to feel like a slight departure from what we spoke about in the previous lectures. But what I want to emphasize to you is that this is just another way that we can describe locations in the Euclidean plane. And once we have the basics down from today's lecture, then what we'll try and do is we'll use these things to describe even more complex curves in the plane, which could be potentially simplified using these polar descriptions. And we know where that sort of naturally leads. That allows us to do calculus, right? We can return to a lot of the, the problems that we started this class with, uh, as we saw with parametric curves, and we can do similar things with these uh, radial or these polar coordinates that we're going to introduce today. Now, as I said, we are just going to focus on the basics, the introduction, the definitions, how we can conceptualize these things and move back and forth between Cartesian coordinates, X and Y, and these polar coordinates. And then what we'll do in the videos that follow this is move through and progress through to more sort of calculus oriented problems. Now, where I'd like to start today is thinking about first how we describe things using Cartesian coordinates. So, you know, if I give you a point X and Y in the plane, think about how you figure out where that is in this Cartesian plane. And this, uh, this might actually be almost unfamiliar because you're so good at using Cartesian coordinates. But if you think about, say, if I have a point that I give you, I call it x, y, how is it that we know it's at that location? Well, we know that x, y is a roadmap to move x units from the origin along the horizontal axis. So this thing has x units. And then move y units vertically in order to get up to your point. Now, of course, you can swap the order here. You can start by moving vertically first, y units up, and you can move horizontally next. It doesn't matter. They both wind you up at the same point. But what you can really see from my little picture here is that this is a rectangular coordinate system. Right? You are sort of tracing out a rectangular. You're moving on horizontal axes and vertical axes in order to describe where you are in the plane. Now, what I'm going to introduce to you are what are known as polar coordinates. And these things move on circles instead of on uh, rectangles. So let me show you what I mean. Let's start with, again, some point in the plane. So I'm going to call it again x, y. So let's maybe put it right here, just for illustration. And I want to describe how to get to this thing using a different method. So what I will do is first I will move. It's going to look like we're doing Cartesian coordinates off the bat, but I can assure you that's not the case. I'm going to move our units along the horizontal axis. So R units horizontally away from the origin. Now R here stands for a ray or a radius. As I mentioned, this is a circular coordinate system. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that vector and I'm going to rotate it up until it points at my point of interest x, y. So what I do here is I rotate this thing by an angle theta. And so what this means is I can equivalently describe 
a point in the Cartesian plane, say x, y, your rectangular coordinate point, by a radius movement along the horizontal axis and an angle that you rotate up to point at it. Okay, so we're going to adopt a few different conventions here. Uh, the first one is that the theta variable is going to be positive when you rotate counterclockwise. So this is coming from uh, trigonometry. This is a convention in all of mathematics. Okay, so sometimes, most of the time, people take the radius to be positive. So we're moving just in the, uh, the rightward direction along the horizontal axis. But you can equivalently move in the leftward direction along the horizontal axis to get to the same point. So this is one of the complexities of using polar coordinates, is that it's not necessarily unique to describe the same point in space. Let me give you an example. Let me start with that same point that I had before. And in this case, I'm going to start with negative values of r. So again, I want to get myself to this point, x, y, in space. But I'm going to first move in the leftward direction to some radius r. So this is going to be less than or equal to 0 now. And then what I'm going to do is I am going to rotate myself theta units in this case, or if you want, if this case, my theta would be less than zero because I'm rotating uh, clockwise, or equivalently, you can rotate to keep theta positive by going counterclockwise. So this is a, a sort of annoying complexity of, of polar coordinates, right? There is more than one way to describe the same point in space. What you can also see from my, my two pictures here is that there's another annoying complexity. And that's that I can keep just adding 2 pi to theta in order to uniquely describe exactly the same point in space by just going around the origin again. So look at this. I could do this, which is theta plus 2 pi, which means that I can equivalently describe this point in space as theta plus 2 pi. And I could add another 2 pi, so I can go around the origin twice and do this. It would be theta plus 4 pi. Similarly, I could rotate in the other direction. So let me put some blue on this. Uh, I, it's, things are going to get a little messy here. I'll try and put blue on the inside. But I could rotate it clockwise, just like you see with my other picture down here. And I could get the point r theta minus 2 pi. So here's the issue, right? This is the usual issue that we, we encounter when we deal with angles we have this sort of non-uniqueness of the angle because you can continually rotate in a circle. Now, that kind of makes things complicated, but this also is a really nice way of uniting trigonometry with our description of, of places in the plane. And, you know, if you're, if you're trying to wrap your head around this, uh, you know, the way I like to think about it is sometimes if you watch like a cop movie or something and somebody says, you know, on your, on your 11 o'clock, that's what this is saying, right? It's telling you a direction to look in uh, using this coordinate theta. Now, for example, if I wanted to look on my 11 o'clock, I could do just turn and look on my 11 o'clock, or I could stand in place, do one full rotation around the clock, and then turn to 11 o'clock. And I can do that full rotation in either direction that I want. So this is how you should think about this, right? This sort of spinning in either way. And so let me give you an explicit example here. So let me ask you, or let me ask of you maybe, uh, let's say find all polar coordinates. So find all polar coordinates 
of the point P of two comma pi over six. So this is my point in the plane described using polar coordinates. Let's just offer a, a brief little sketch here. Um, using the description that's given to us right there, we have an angle, sorry, we have an angle of pi over six and we have a radius of two. So maybe we look something like this. Here, the angle is pi over six. The length of this thing is two. This is P of two pi over six. P just stands for point in this case. Now, as I just pointed out, there are many different ways to describe this thing, right? So the first one is if we wanna keep the radius positive, then we can just keep rotating by pi over two or minus pi over two. So we can say, you know, for r is equal to two here, uh, the angles are, so, sorry, maybe I shouldn't have so many colons in here. Well, the angles are, so pi over six, that's the one that's originally given to you, but then you can go backwards or forwards by pi over two. You can go backwards or forwards by pi, uh, four pi, sorry, two pi and four pi. You can go backwards and forwards by six pi and so on and so forth. Just adding two pi over and over and over again or subtracting two pi. And all that represents is you standing in place doing a, a complete rotation and then you're just back to where you started, right? So think about my 11 o'clock example. Okay, then let's think about how we can equivalently describe this thing with a negative radius. So let me offer up a brief sketch here. What do we have? Well, if we just wanna draw the prescription of this thing using a negative radius, it's going to come out minus two units and then rotate all the way around. Sorry, it's not my best drawing. So in this case, we have this rotation for an angle in here. And this is again, P of two pi over six. So basically we're gonna say for a negative radius, so for R is equal to minus two, perfectly valid if we wanted to describe this, you know, it's kind of a weird thing to think of a negative radius, but again, this is math, we abstract everything. Uh, the angles are, well, really, we just need to figure out what the base angle is, and then we add plus or minus pi over two to it. So what is that angle? Well, it's going clockwise the way I've drawn it, and it's going pi, almost 180 degrees, pi. We always use radians for this, this is mathematics, and then minus the pi over six that's in here. So, this is going to be minus five pi over six. That's my angle. So it equals minus five pi over six. And then you can do the same trick where you just add and subtract two pi's to make it whatever, uh, you know, you're just going around in a circle over and over and over again, All right? So the one way you can think about this is really there's only sort of two ways to do this, positive radius, uh, and, and positive angle or negative radius and negative angle. And then everything else is just rotating, you know, in a full circle to get around. Now, there's a nice property of these, these polar coordinates that we can describe uh, really, really simple or, or really simply geometric objects that were relatively complicated to describe uh, prior to this. And in particular, you know, as we've seen, this is a circular coordinate system, right? So radius and angle, as opposed to, you know, side and side for the Cartesian coordinates. And so we can describe, say, a circle very, very easily. So if we say, um, you know, we can, we can describe a circle in the plane, by uh, considering 
r equal to say plus or minus let's use one we're going to use just the unit circle you can uh, you can choose whatever you want and let theta go over all uh, real values so we know that as long as theta goes between zero and pi it's just going to trace out a full circle for us and so essentially the radius is just telling us where we start in the plane right so we have uh let's see how my circle turns out here ah yes good so we have uh let's use blue for this just to illustrate you can either start by going forward one unit that's positive radius maybe the blue is a little harder to see than i'd like it to be or you can start by going backwards one unit and then you can just take that vector and rotate it all the way around so this is sort of a this is a parametric description um, of your uh, of your uh, circle here, right? It's R is fixed. You can choose whatever you want. That's your radius of your circle. And theta is equal to, you know, T if you wanted to, if you want to follow the parametric examples from the previous, uh, previous um, videos. Similarly, we can describe lines very, very easily, right? And so let's say fix theta equal to say pi over six and let uh, r vary over all real values. So this is important, right? Because this tells you how you can intuit what this coordinate system is giving you. So what you're getting here are all possible rays that are at an angle of pi over six from the origin. So for example, let me show you, that goes through the origin. It has an angle of pi over six here. And in this case, this is all r greater than or equal to zero moving up and to the right. And this is all r less than or equal to zero moving down into the left. So you should think about these things in terms of your vector calculus, right? You're sort of putting a negative value. You mean you're going in the opposite direction from where you started. And, you know, we can use a little bit of geometry here to see that that angle is again pi over six. And, you know, you have the larger angle is five pi over six. So this is just sort of your basic geometry facts that are helping you out here. But here's the thing, what these two examples tell you is that if you fix a value of the radius and you let theta be whatever it wants, you're describing circles. Then if you fix a value of the of theta and you let r be whatever it wants, you're describing lines. These are very, very simple ways of describing things that are, you know, complex and fundamental geometric objects. Okay, let's uh, let's have a little bit more fun with this. Let's start. Uh, seeing how we can describe sets using these things. So let's say part A, let's let one be less than or equal to R, which is less than or equal to two. And let's say zero is less than or equal to theta, which is less than or equal to pi over two. So the question is, what does this set look like? Well, let's use our definition. Now, the radius here is between one and two. So that means that the length of the initial ray that you're using to describe these polar coordinates can either come out to one and it can extend all the way out to two. So it's, it's on this region. This is the, the length of all of the rays that can come out. And then our theta is saying, you can take that ray, every single element in that ray, and you can rotate it by either zero radians or anything all the way up to pi over two, right? So the right angle, 90 degrees, if you're more familiar with degrees. And so let's say, for example, if you fix the radius at one, you're getting 
a quarter of the circle. You're rotating yourself all the way up to potentially pi over two. Similarly, if you have a ray of length two, you are rotating yourself up all the way to potentially pi over two. And everything in between there also gets rotated. So you have this thing you're doing, you're essentially getting a quarter of a washer here. Now we've had to deal with washers before uh, it, with Cartesian coordinates. These things are annoying and hard to define, right? If you go all the way back to where we started at the beginning of this class, like 50 some lecture videos be uh, before, uh, this is, these are objects that are very, very complicated to describe car using Cartesian coordinates, but look at how easy they were to describe using radio or using polar coordinates. Okay, let's, uh, let's see some other examples. Well, let's do uh, minus three is less than or equal to R, which is less than or equal to two. And uh, theta is equal to pi over four. So what is uh, this thing describing? What does this set look like in the Cartesian plane? Well, let's think about this. First of all, the radius goes between minus three, so three units backwards or in the leftward direction from the origin on the horizontal axis, all the way up to two units forward. So I've got a little line segment of length five. And then what happens? You are fixing your theta component to be pi over two. So you rotate this thing perfectly on a right up to a right angle. And so what you're going to map out here is a line segment that has, that is going all the way up to positive two here and all the way down to minus three in your Cartesian coordinate system. And this thing is being rotated by pi over two in this case. So again, you think of your initial ray, and then you think of what theta does to it. Okay, that's at least that's how I think about these things, and I think it's helpful. All right, let's do one more example like this. Let's let uh, two pi over three be less than or equal to theta, which is less than or equal to five pi over six, uh, and minus infinity less than r, which is less than infinity. Okay, so how do we think about this thing? Where is this in the plane? We're gonna sort of think about this intuitively using uh, this sort of same ideas that we just talked about. So first of all, this is taking the entire X axis, right? Because R can go between minus infinity and infinity. And what you're doing is you're either rotating that thing by two pi over three, so all the way up, and around, I'm gonna contort myself. I'm almost doing yoga trying to do this. Or you're going to, at the very most, rotate that thing all the way up and around until you get to five pi over three. So they are entire lines that are being rotated here. And what you're getting is, let's, let's do the, the bottom. So two pi over three rotation here. So this is gonna take me to this infinitely extended line. So here's my angle. Uh, maybe let's put it in green just so it's distinguished. This is two pi over three. Then the outer extreme here is going to five pi over six. So in this case, let's just draw an angle here. So I get, five pi over six. Again, we're back to my very poor drawing skills like we were at the beginning of this, uh, this, these lectures, but I hope that you know this is giving something of value to you. And you can get anything in between these, right? So I can take anything in here. That's the point, right? So the, these are describing 
these sort of like infinite cones almost that are just going out forever because you have the R going from minus infinity to infinity. Okay, so I've been doing a lot of talking uh, about, you know, basically all I've been doing is uh, trying to figure out how to describe these things in terms of the Cartesian coordinates that we know and love, right? So X's and Y's, right? I keep saying it's just the X axis and then you sort of rotate it, blah, blah, blah. So the question is, you know, how do you actually get back and forth between these two coordinate systems? Because of course, if I can describe something in Cartesian coordinates, I should be able to describe it in polar coordinates and vice versa. So let's look at this. Let's look at the conversion equations. So conversion between Cartesian and polar coordinates. So my, I'm just gonna put a little note underneath my Cartesian coordinates, that's like X and Y. And my polar coordinates are r and theta. So this is a two-dimensional plane. So I need two coordinates to describe it, all right? It's just talking about different ways. Again, think rectangles for Cartesian, think circles for polar. So that means that if I know uh, my polar coordinates, so let's say polar to Cartesian, well, I can define X to be R times cos of theta. Again, you might wanna go back and look at what we did with parametric equations, because this is looking a lot like how we described the parametric equation of a circle of radius R. Similarly, I can get Y is equal to R sine theta. So just describing where you are on a circle. And if, if you want to go back to the very beginning of this video where I showed that you can just sort of rotate your rays up. So then what about Cartesian to polar? So if I have the, pol uh, the Cartesian coordinates, X and Y, how do I get the polar coordinates? Well, the radius R, the ray, this thing squared is equal to X squared plus Y squared. Right. This is uh, this is the, uh, the the Pythagorean theorem. It tells you the sort of length of your ray, where you are, the radius of your circle. Similarly, your theta. So if you do some some trigonometry, maybe you'll set up a little uh, angle like this with R here and X and Y here. And then if you want to figure out what your angle is, you can see that tan of theta is equal to Y over X. So you have this trigonometry relation between these things. And in particular, now, typically there is a unique, well, there is always a unique theta between zero and two pi uh, that describes this thing when X and Y is not equal to the origin, right? So if, if X and Y is equal to zero, zero, then R is equal to zero. And there's no, there's no way of describing an angle because every single angle is gonna work for this. So, you know, as long as you're not describing the origin, uh, there is a unique value of theta between zero and two pi. And we saw this with the examples, right? We saw the, uh, uh, the, the pi over six example, the, the first example that we described, you can describe it with a unique number between zero and two pi, that was pi over six, but if you want to get into the negative values, then you can do that with minus five pi over six. And then you can just add and subtract two pi's in there. So a lot of times people, you know, mathematicians like to whittle this down. We say, you know, again, use my 11 o'clock example. It would be ridiculous for me to turn to 11 o'clock by doing a full rotation and then turning to 11. So that's what this prescription is telling you. It says, you know, don't uh, you know, don't force yourself to go in a circle when you don't need to, just turn directly to where you want to look. That's all this is uh, telling you. Okay, then let's do some examples. Uh, let's, let's convert back and forth between polar and, um, and Cartesian coordinates. So let's say we have R cos theta is equal to two. Well, what we can see is that R cos theta, so this is, a, this is a description of a curve that's given to us 
in polar coordinates, then how do we see what this is in, in Cartesian coordinates? Well, r cos theta is equal to x. So this is the line x is equal to 2, right? So this is a vertical line at x equal to 2. OK, how about r squared cos squared theta? Uh, sorry, let's do r squared cos theta sine theta. Pardon me. Uh, and let's say this is equal to 4. Well, I can equivalently say this is r cos theta, r sine theta, which is equal to 4. Now, r cos theta is x, r sine theta is y. So this is actually the curve x times y is equal to 4. Right, so you can see this kind of cool little duality between curves in polar coordinates and curves in Cartesian coordinates. And really all it is is playing this fun little game of you know, using these methods, this, this polar to Cartesian that I have uh, right up here in order to take yourselves from polar variables and move yourself to Cartesian variables. Okay, let's, uh, let's do another one. This one's kind of easy right off the bat, but let's, we got to start easy before we can get into the more complex problems. So r squared cos squared minus r squared sine squared is equal to, let's just say one. Well, this thing is the same as r cos theta all squared. And this thing is r sine theta all squared, which is just x squared minus y squared is equal to one which you may be familiar with, these are describing hyperbolas. Um, okay, let's do one that's not uh, as trivial. Okay, so let's do D. Uh, this is gonna be R is equal to one plus two R cos theta. Okay, so this one is not immediately obvious. It takes a little bit of work to get ourselves back to Cartesian coordinates. And this is where, you know, you have to do a couple little tricks. You have to play with things to make them a little, uh, a little better on it. So what we're going to do is we're going to square both sides. Now, why do I want to square both sides? Because the left-hand side gives me R squared. And R squared is equal to X squared plus Y squared. So if we go back up here, the Cartesian to polar prescription tells us that R squared is equal to X squared plus Y squared. That's coming from the Pythagorean identity. And so I get one plus two R cos theta squared, which let's expand that out. I get one plus four R cos theta and then plus four R squared cos squared theta. Okay, now we can start putting in Cartesian coordinates. This is x squared plus y squared. And on the right, I have one plus, now I have four r cos theta, that's four x. So four x. And then four r squared cos squared, that's four x squared. So plus four x squared. And this thing is going to be a pretty ugly looking curve. If I rearrange it, I get y squared minus 3x squared, uh, and then minus 4x minus 1 is equal to 0. That thing is a really, really complicated, ugly looking curve. Look at how easy it was to describe in Cartesian coordinates. Uh, but in, I'm sorry, it's easy to describe in polar coordinates, but in uh, Cartesian coordinates, it's pretty ugly, right? I don't really have much of an in intuition for what these things are describing. But the point is with polar, it was slightly easier, right? Okay, uh, I wanna give you one more, just as an example, I'm not gonna work through it. I'm gonna leave this one for you to have a little bit of fun with. So in this case, I have R is equal to one minus cos theta. And what you're going to need to do is multiply through by R and then square everything. And you're gonna see, so I'm gonna leave this for you to have your fun with. You're gonna get X to the four plus Y to the four 
plus 2x squared y squared plus 2x cubed plus 2x y squared minus y squared is equal to zero. So I want you to try and challenge yourself with this one. This is a tough one, right? It's very, very hard. You first need to multiply through by r, and that's going to give you r squared is equal to r minus r cos theta. And then you can square all sides in order to uh, get the r on the right-hand side into an r squared. OK? So I'm going to leave you with that to have a little bit of fun with. Uh, let's do a different example. Let's go the other way. So let's say find a polar representation. Uh, let's, let's find it, say find a polar equation for the circle. Okay, so here's our circle, x squared plus now y minus three squared is equal to nine. So this is the equation of a circle centered at uh, zero comma three. So on the y-axis in the Cartesian plane, and this thing has a radius equal to three, right? So the square root of nine. So this is a standard way of writing this as a, um, uh, in, in Cartesian coordinates. We're gonna see that this thing is much easier to write in polar coordinates. So here's what we wanna do. First thing, let's expand this out. We get x squared plus y squared minus 6y plus 9 is equal to 9. Now, of course, we've got 9s on both sides. So let's get rid of those. And then what we're going to do, well, first, this gives us x squared plus y squared minus 6y is equal to 0 which x squared plus y squared, that's a nice r squared from the conversion to polar coordinates. And we have six r sine theta coming from the six y term. And because this is equal to zero, we can factor it. So we get r times r minus six sine theta is equal to zero. Now, what we can see from this is that either one, one of these brackets has to be zero because we factored this. Now, one case, maybe let's do this, r equal to zero. Well, this is useless, right? This doesn't describe a circle. Certainly not, right? r is the radius. Uh, a radius of zero is not a circle. So this thing is useless to us. It's not going to help. But this guy right here, well, it gives us r minus 6 sine theta uh, is equal to 0, which gives us that r is equal to 6 sine theta. And that is the description of a circle using polar coordinates. So this is super cool, right? I think that this is fascinating because look at how simple this description of the circle is. r is equal to 6 sine theta. Now, I know that the description in Cartesian coordinates may not be that intimidating to you, but it's certainly, you know, it's a lot more writing than I would care to, to, to care to use. And importantly, as we get better with polar coordinates, as we do more examples, as we work with more, uh, with, with more exercises, as we just become more fluent with polar coordinates, we're going to see that we're certainly going to prefer that description of the circle in terms of the radius and the angle theta, as opposed to you know, using these like x squared plus y squared is equal to blah, 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 right? These, these annoyingly complicated descriptions in Cartesian coordinates. So this is just something that's gonna come with practice that we're gonna continue to improve and build upon in the next few lectures.